For the sake of maintaining a consistent tone throughout the video, I'd like to tell you about our sponsor, Royal Match, first, before we get into the interrogation. Royal Match is a completely free-to-play and completely ad-free Match 3 puzzle game from Dream Games. Join millions of players as you help King Robert restore his castle to its former glory, overcome obstacles by solving Match 3 puzzles, and utilizing exciting power-ups. As you complete levels, new areas of the castle will open up for you to explore, containing exciting new challenges for you to conquer. You can go it alone or team up with friends, competing in local or global championships, working together or fighting it out to see who's number one. Royal Match has over 4,500 levels and doesn't require an internet connection to play, so you can relax, unwind, and give yourself the royal treatment wherever you are. So check out Royal Match by using my link in the description or pinned comment below. Not only are you getting a great game, but it really helps support the channel. The guys at Dream Games have been great to work with, and sponsors like them make these videos possible. So go show them some love. Thank you to Dream Games for sponsoring this video, and now, on to the interrogation. Um, I, I need to interview everyone separately, so um, mm -hmm. let me try to find you somewhere before I can find you to hang out with for a minute. Is okay. that okay? Is there a bathroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you where that's at. This is 26 year old Elizabeth Archibeek in Flagstaff, Arizona. On March 2nd, 2020, Archibique's mother-in-law, Ann Martinez, called the police, stating that her grandson had been found unresponsive and she believed he was dead. EMTs quickly arrived to find a clearly emaciated six-year-old Deshaun Martinez lying on the floor of the family's bedroom, unresponsive and deceased. They initially tried to give Deshaun CPR, but were unable to open his mouth because his jaw was locked in place. Police arrived shortly thereafter, and Archibique, her husband, Anthony Martinez, and his mother, Anne Marie Martinez, who owned the house they were staying in, were brought in for questioning. Today we're going to be looking at Elizabeth's interrogation, specifically the first hour or so. The total length of the interrogation clocks in at around six hours, so I decided it would be best to look at the interrogation in different phases, which happens to line up nicely with the general narrative and employment of techniques. One thing I wanted to mention before we get started is that the audio quality for this interrogation is rough. The main issue is that Archibique is very quiet and the detective is very loud, so I had to pull out all the stops to make her even remotely understandable, one of which was using AI. Oh, he got you he's born, he had a UTI. Oh, he got you he's born, he had a UTI. It came out okay, much better than it was, but if you hear some occasional weird audio, that's what that is. Just to be safe, I got a professional transcriptionist to go over the footage as well, and then I went through one more time to make sure the subtitles are as accurate as possible. This all took forever and was super tedious, so if you liked the video and want to support the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I know it's a tacky ask, but it really does help. Robots have terrible taste, so they rely on you to tell them what's good. Alright, with that out of the way, let's jump in. how incredibly difficult this may be uh, for you. Some tissues, if you'd like some tissues and just a water bottle. Um, yeah, I'd like to try to figure out what happened and, and whatnot. Can I get your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth? E-L-I-Z-A-B-T-H? 
What is this? What's your middle name? Desiree. Desiree? <coughs> How do you spell that? D E S. D A S. D E S. Sorry. D E S. I R D E. I R D E. And your last name? Archibald. A R C. A R C H. I B E. I B E. Q U E. Q U E. Okay, Elizabeth, do you go by Liz? Elizabeth, what do you prefer to be called? Lizzie. Lizzie? Lizzie, what's your date of birth? How old are you? I don't know. What is it? 26. 26. Um, what's a good phone number for you? Um, so you have no phone numbers? Yeah, you have on Wi-Fi I, or anything? I've only been using my husband. What would this contact number be? I'm not sure. He literally just got new phones. <laughs> but my brain's the number. So you don't know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Where do you guys live? Or where do you live? We're in van. What part of home lives? So we just would stay as long as we need to. See a lot. He just been say it as a mom, because we're homeless. Okay. Um, can I ask a favor of you? I, I have an ear infection going on in my left ear. I'm having a hard time hearing you off my left side. Can we switch seats so I can hear you better? I'm sorry. I would have to keep asking you what and whatnot. Where you sit there, wherever you want. Just so, just so I can hear you a little, a little bit easier. My things go a little more smooth. Sorry about that. Here's some Kleenexes. If you need Kleenexes and whatnot. Um, I don't know entirely what's going on, and because I don't know what's going on, uh, I always read people what's called the Miranda right. I'm gonna read those to you now, just because reading your rights doesn't mean you're in trouble or anything. It's just, it's just stuff I have to let you know legally, okay? It says you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney to assist you prior to any questioning and to be with you during a question if you so desire. If you cannot afford an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed before you before questioning. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights, not answer any questions or make any statements. Um, sign of this just says that you understand the above or you have read the above and I understand uh, each of those rights in your way and that being that you're able to talk to me. Does that make sense? Okay, would you, uh, if you're okay with that, would you sign right there? What's his name? As the detective gets Lizzie's information, and yes, I am going to be calling her that for the duration of this video, so I don't have to say Archibeak over and over, but it's okay because that's actually what she's referred to as in the official interrogation synopsis from the police reports, you'll notice that he's not really trying to build rapport, like we see in a lot of other interrogations. Usually interrogators try to earn some favor or trust from the suspect, be it by minimizing the severity of their actions, like, oh, it wasn't that big of a deal, any other parent would have done the same thing, or by bringing them a crappy fast food cheeseburger to show that they care about their well-being. They usually try to do something, but not here. This detective's taking a different approach, being meek, mild, to the point, and for lack of a better phrase, playing dumb almost acting like he really doesn't know why she's there, or what she's believed to have done. This lets Liz completely take the lead in terms of what details she wants to offer, and what kind of narrative she wants to try and paint for herself. And it is 1.38. Is the second? Um, Lizzie, let me, let me get back to this here. So uh, I got your name, I got your date of birth. Um, do you said, Um, 
when I asked you where you lived, you said you guys were homeless. Where have you guys been staying at? Very close at his, at my husband's home. Day one, day one, I don't know. The husband's, the husband's wife. Usually it's at my husband's mom's house. Husband's mom's house. Mm -hmm. Then we left out of our band, other than that, like at nights and stuff. We just have it recently because our band broke them. Okay, what's your husband's mom's house? Hmm? Where's your husband's mom's house at? Mm -hmm. Is it where the call came in at? Yeah. Okay. What's your husband's name? Anthony. Anthony? Mm -hmm. That's yours. You know what's Anthony's mom's name? Emily. Who else is in your family? I have three other kids. So you, your husband, and three children? Mm -hmm. What's your children's names? And then what's your next child's name? What is it? He's the one who Okay, I spelled Deshaun. D E S H H A U A U N Martinez? Yeah. And how old is Deshaun? Six. Six. Okay, and what's your next child's name? Mm -hmm. Almost five. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else that lives with you guys? Mm -hmm. Just his mom and my wife. So there's so when you guys were staying in the van it was the four children, you and Anthony. Um, so it's six of you guys, but then who lives over at Anne Marie's house? Just her. Just her? Mm -hmm. So you guys would flip back and forth between the two places? Yeah. When your van was um, where it was, were you guys mobile going around places or was it parked somewhere? Or? Um, yeah, we'd, um, because my kids have school, so we'd be at Anne Marie's house during the day and then at night we'd um, be in the van and uh, parking. And in the parking lot, is it the parking lot of that same apartment complex? No, mm, it's in a different town. In a different town? Mm -hmm. Where at? In, oh, well, what's it called? The Belmont, I think. It was a, a, it's a truck stop that lets you stay there for free. That's the closest I have not for free. So not too much of note is going on so far, as the detective continues to get basic family information, but I did want to quickly point out the way that Liz responded when asked how many kids she has, stating that she has three other kids, as well as how when the detective asked for their names, she asked, do you want Deshaun's? He's the one who died. It's nothing concrete, but typically when people lose someone they care about unexpectedly, they don't immediately begin mentally excluding them from their family. It typically takes a while for the reality to set in that you no longer have four kids, you had four kids. For a mother especially, it seems strange that her child was found dead only a couple hours ago, and she's already easily saying that she basically has three left, as if she was expecting something like this to happen. I may be reading too much into it, but keep an eye out, because it keeps happening. How long have you been married? If um, this is right before Deshaun. This is right? This is right before Deshaun. Oh, so it's just, so just a little over six years? Yeah. Where are you guys from? 
<laughs> and we're just really drunk out. Yeah, we will spend here this one. Well, he was born in Virgin Islands, but he came here as a baby. How did you meet? School. You went out of school? Mm hmm. We went to high school too. What high school? Tia. Here in town? Mm hmm. Just like Did you guys ever move from Platt? Yeah, we. Um, the, what year? We just actually moved back like about a year ago from Iowa. We were there for uh, maybe three years. Iowa? Yep. I had some. What brought you guys out that way? Um, my grandpa had just died, so we only moved there to um, take care of my grandma. Like she recently passed before we moved back here. And how long did you say you were in Iowa? We got home, I don't know, three or four years. Have you been in flag for how long? We moved for us April. And during that time, you've just been living in the van and back and forth between. Well, we were living at um, another girl you just saw. Her name is Anne Marie, too, but that's Anthony's sister. That's a different Anne Marie. Yeah. Oh, please. I don't so, is Anne Marie Grandma? Yeah. What's her last name? <coughs> and then there's an Anne Marie Jr., mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. That's his sister. Mm -hmm. Does she live with Anne Marie Sr.? No, she had her own place. Okay. So we were looking at her for a little bit. What happened there? How long were you guys there for? We were there for. A few months in that she her house um, got put up for some. Yeah, okay. And then since then, what happened? Mm. Like, did you guys move? After that, we were, that's when we started being in the van and, and the building and things. We forced, um, we were trying to save up for an apartment, but then Anthony Strott, well, his, the owner of the company, decided um, to close the business without telling anyone and without a state. Where, so, no, where did Anthony work? For, um, the other thing is on the is what's called. <clears throat> Do you work? Peace. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Did your job was taking care of those kids, huh? Yes. I can imagine four of those guys running around. That's, that's a full-time job in itself, huh? <laughs> Stay at home mom. This is the first of very few times the detective gives Lizzie any kind of positive reinforcement or any kind of out assuring her that taking care of those kids was a full-time job. The only problem is, the further we get into this interrogation, the more obvious it becomes that Liz looked at parenting as more of a side hustle than a full-time gig. So in the time that you guys have been in Flagstaff, since moving back from Iowa, how's that been? Been good for us, better because he was able to get work here, which wasn't happening in Iowa, which is another reason we moved here to begin with. Besides, I'm happy with family here. Um, <coughs> and good kids um, have been better too, because um, are you familiar with Iowa at all? Not a lot. Mm -hmm. We lived in a town called Osceola, which was like. When we met in nowhere, tiny, everybody knew everyone kind of thing. So mm -hmm. being here, because both my daughters were born there, um, made it a big city to them. Mm -hmm. They've been loving it. And they have a lot of family here. Cousins. And their aunt, of course. Some 
with what Alan and um, work was. We've been just trying to get back on our feet after he lost his job. And, and what's that? Um, December. So his boss been, told him actually while he was getting him his last check that it was in New York. So. That's rough. So what's, what's he been doing for the better half of two or three months? I've been trying to get work with my, with Anne Marie Jr.'s husband or boyfriend thing at Pepsi. And the last five, no, six applications, they keep saying that they found someone better. So he keeps trying to find out. An opening there because now um, Lorenzo, which is her boyfriend, said that he'd probably be able to get him a job, so he's been waiting for that. Besides that, all, he's, all we've really been doing is filling out applications, and then he's been getting denied by most of them. So. Yeah, it's, that's rough. Can you tell me more about that? How this, how's that been affecting you? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I try not to. Worry about it too much because I have really bad anxiety, and when I do start thinking about it, I just I'm shut down pretty much. What do you mean you shut down? Mm -hmm. I used to sell phones. So. How so? Cutting. Superficially? Where would you cut at? Uh -uh. Seen for that or so this is a pretty textbook example of a suspect trying to gain some sympathy, offering up severe anxiety and a history of self-harm unprovoked when being asked about their spouse's employment, especially given the context of the question. But much like how the detective's approach is a bit of an outlier in relation to most interrogations I've seen, Lizzie's is a little bit too. At least in the sense that, while she may indeed be trying to elicit sympathy, she doesn't do it a lot through the rest of the interrogation, unlike a lot of narcissistic suspects who think that they're the real victim of whatever it is they're in there for. I couldn't find a lot of specifics, but it is known that Liz did have a rough upbringing and a tumultuous family life, even meeting her husband Anthony in the TIA, or Turn It Around program, for troubled youth at their school. So while it doesn't come close to justifying what she did, given the fact that she doesn't really bring it up again, I believe her on that. Tell me about your kids. <laughs> Everything. All of them. And Deshaun. Deshaun was born two days after my birthday. And he was in a big... Like everything, because we almost lost him when he was a baby. Tell me about that. He had a week after he was born, he had a UTI. They lost, lost over a pound as a newborn. And um, when we took him in, they said if we brought him in an hour later, he would have been dead. And ever since that happened, he hasn't been able to gain weight properly, and all his doctors, I don't know what it is. I don't know why UTI would even cause a permanent weight issue. But every time I ask him, I'm just like, oh, something must have happened because that's why he's not gaining weight. That's why he's not at his whatever percentile or whatever they call it. He's always been super funny for his for his age, for his height, for everything. Mm -hmm. And it's always been hard trying to get him to maintain any kind of weight. Like, we could give him, like, literally, actually, like, about a week ago, we gave him four sandwiches just to try to get him to not be oh, so tiny. It's just to see if it would work, because before, if we let him, like, I guess overeat, he just would throw up, throw all back up. Oh. And when I tried that, he didn't gain anything either. And I found out he got into my um, caffeine pills for weight loss, and he lost literally all his, all his fat from that, which was nothing really to begin with, so he's looked 
I guess fell into it after that and my note this was probably all my fault anyway because of that because they were my thoughts and I didn't catch him getting into them because he had a little st stash of them and it was just popping out like candy you were? he was I didn't know where did you keep it? I had it in a um my a pocket of my suitcase that was in my closet but I didn't know he was um, getting into it I didn't even know he knew it was in there because I had even forgotten about it during the move have you been seeing any uh, pediatricians or anything like that? Um, we took him to Dr. Bosch here Bosch? yeah are they with Mountain View Pediatrics? yeah this one's and then we got turned away because I was. How do you spell Bosch? B O S C H. It's a weird spell. What did Dr. Bosch say? She said that he's really tiny and that he probably won't grow into past five feet and just to try to keep. Um, like, keep nutrition and stuff in him as much as we can, which is what, I don't know if they told you that I really know my um, husband was saying, but on the 7th we're supposed to be getting more money and we're going to buy a pediatrician to try that, because apparently that stuff actually makes you gain a lot of weight. Like, literally a week away. Did they set you up on like a plan of of what he should be eating, how he should be eating, when he should be eating, like a meal plan, or did they line anything up for you, or just say, hey? When he's hungry, feed him. He's literally always saying he is, and so that we're feeding him and got all times a day, giving him water and stuff all times a day. And but if he'd eat like enough to keep away, he'd end up throwing up and then losing it again, or just running around he'd lose it and <laughs> that's why I wanted to try the PDH and then we are supposed to take him to Phoenix and the car got fixed to the what to call it? children's hospital or something to them to be like the number one hospital so we're gonna see if they could tell us anything different what would you guys feed him? <laughs> everything he ate and the possums, rice, vegetables, um, that was his favorite. Um, we didn't give him really that much sugar though. Um, meat, because we eat a lot of meat because um, I'm anemic, and so is my daughter. So we try to get um, like the highest iron if we use as we can. If I'm in school. You do? Oh. Yeah, we purposely give him like fattier foods even though we, than what we were eating. That's why most of it was like starches and stuff like that. They do. And it just so that we're cool. So every time they think he'd look a little bit thicker, it'd be gone by the next week. Okay, now this fits the archetype a lot more closely. In almost all of these types of interrogations where a parent is suspected of harming or killing their child, there's a point where when asked a simple question along the lines of tell me about your kids, the suspect will immediately hone in on whatever they know the police are looking for and try to get ahead of it. I appreciate it's possible she's in shock or could be in an unusual state given the circumstances, but with how calmly and accurately she's been answering questions so far, I don't really think that's the case. All the detective said was, tell me about your kids. And she immediately starts talking about how they're my everything, all of them, especially Deshaun, the one I'm suspected of starving to death. He always had this thing where he was underweight ever since he was a baby. It was just very normal for him to be extremely malnourished. That's just how he was. He's always hungry, we're always feeding him, just can't gain weight. We take him to all the doctors and they just can't figure it out. He also had a bad habit of getting into things. Like just last week, he got into my caffeine pills and took some. 
Can you believe this kid? I'm sure it sounds great in their head and feels totally natural while they're saying it, but from the outside, it's pretty apparent what they're doing. Dude. Bring those pills up. Palm and see those pills out. What the fuck's everything? Where are the pills at now? I threw them away when I found them. I didn't find them. The only reason he found them was because he dropped one out of his pocket trying to show something. Who? Deshaun did. He had some in his pocket? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. He went. Um, and Marie was, had come over that day, and he went to show her something. When you say that day, what, what day are we talking about? The day that we f I found the post, it was a couple of weeks ago, maybe, I don't remember exactly. A couple of weeks ago? Um, he had one of those jackets that has like a front pocket right here, but mm -hmm. it opens up at the top. And he went to reach and then give her a piece of paper or something that he held. And one of them came out with it and fell onto the floor, and we had, and we had seen it. So I asked him about it, and that's how I found out what it what it was from, and what it was the caffeine cups. Can you tell me about that conversation? Um, yeah, it fell out, and I had picked it up because he didn't notice that it had fallen, and I had just seen it. And then when he walked away, I grabbed it. And it's such a shock, was six. And he said it was candy because he didn't know, I guess. Because it was a slit, it was a gel one, so sweet. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, Show me where you got it. And so he took me out into that pocket in my suitcase mm -hmm. and pulled it out. And, and so I took all the rest of it and threw them in the trash. A couple weeks ago? Mm hmm. <laughs> He had hidden, like, a stash of them. He had hidden a stash of them? Mm, he had a pile of them that I had thrown away. I had found and thrown away. Where were those at? And they were in his other, his pockets. His jacket pocket. And when was that? After I had found it. As I went through his stuff. So a couple of weeks ago you went through his because, stuff? Yeah, because of how it had fallen. And then I asked his brother, because he likes to um, keep secrets with his brother. They have like this, like, barn together. And um, I asked his brother if he had any, or if he had seen him take them or anything like that. And he said, yeah, but they're all gone. And I asked him how much, or if, if Deshaun had eaten them, he had said yeah. And I asked him if he did. He said yeah, but um, when my husband went and asked him to, he said no. So I'm not sure if they had both just like popped on or what. But Deshaun's the only one that showed obvious signs of what it was for and was losing weight. So how long do you think you'd been taking these pills? Probably the day that I found him. Maybe the day before that too, because um, they're usually not, or they're usually chilling out in the living room. They're not really in the room that much, so they to be able to go through stuff like that. So, like, if you had to estimate based off the pills that you have and what you normally take, versus like what was there when you found it, like, you know, even if you had to take your best educated guess of like. I should have three fourths of a bottle, but I only had a quarter. Or you know what I mean? Like, how much do you think? Mm. How many pills they were, were missing? Heavy. Five. You think you only took five pills? Um, at least, yeah. Probably not, not much more than that because of how much I found in his pockets. So. And in the bottle, the bottle wasn't empty. It still had a good amount inside of it. So, about five? Mm hmm. 
Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The idea that the death is attributed strictly to Deshaun getting into the caffeine pills several weeks ago becomes Lizzie's main sticking point for most of this interrogation. Despite the incorrect timetable and numerous other obvious issues, all of which will get pointed out, don't worry, that's her story and she's sticking to it. For now, at least. Where's your guys' van at right now? Um, it's parked outside of Anthony's other sister's home. Where is that? It's, um, it's Lisa. Where? Where? It's right next to uh, the Honeydome. There's a little mechanic that place there for that it's called. What, what's her name? The other sister? Cassandra. <clears throat> so where's Cassandra's house again? Actually, it's, oh, you know where Catholic Charities is? It's right by the like literally right down the street from Question, where's Catholic Charities at? Um, that main street over there. Mm -hmm. Yes, that main street. So it is Love Wall Street, right? The street where you can drive mm -hmm. straight to go to Walmart. So is the 4th Street that goes over the overpass, over the train, yeah. there's a big long 4th Street there? Yes, yeah, so it's the street over from that. Street over, like one street into Sunnyside? Mm -hmm. Like 3rd Street? Yeah, I think so. Where on 3rd Street? Um, you know where the school's at? Philip School? Um, yeah, it's a ways down from that. It's closer to like the main... Um, Do you know where Farmer's Highway. Market's at? Yeah. Um, it is closer to that stuff in this main code. What type of van is it? It's a green... Um, no. Forest. The wind store. What type of plates do they have? He has Iowa plates to the way gun changed you. Do you know what year it is? 2000... I'm pretty sure. Was it registered too? Mm -hmm. Do you register on her? Mm -hmm. um, do you kids ever get in trouble or anything like that? Like, do they react out? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about that? Um, whatever. Boys will say away. Um, if one of them got the other mad, they'd get in fights, like physical fights, and we'd have to break them out. And, um, well, they like to steal stuff a lot. Mostly food and drinks that usually that they weren't supposed to have, like candy and stuff. Um, and Steal stuff, what do you mean? Like from stores? Mm -hmm. from just from the house. Like the they house. go sneak into the um, fridge or kitchen and get stuff and get stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like what stuff were they supposed to have that they were taking? Um, candy, sodas, um... Butter. <coughs> Say, well, usually what, what they had. Any the other foods? Um, I caught him with a loaf of bread once. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, they had coffee and they got really sick after that because they're um, lactose intolerant. But that, <coughs> that nothing like. Well, not like regular food, I guess. It's like stuff that they need. And then if they ask for it or something, well, they'd be told no until after dinner or no until... You know, just because it was too late and stuff. Because it would be at night. 
how they would take it. And what do you say? Uh, pantry is this in the RV or is this? No, it's at um, his mom's house. His mom's place. Lizzie says that the boys would steal food. That's a weird word to use, right? Steal. And beyond that, it's weird that the kids would feel the need to steal food in the first place. Candy and chips, maybe, since there are more snacks than they are real food. But if the kids were so hungry that they needed to steal loaves of bread from the kitchen against their mother's wishes, something more is going on here. Did they ever get in trouble for that? Um, yeah, they could time out for it. Time out? Mm -hmm. And, um... Oh, kind of like a therapy thing in Iowa, because he gets so mad he um hit his now two year old sister or try to or hit hit himself. And so we're trying we've been trying to get that under control. Um, I mean maybe he's been kind of better with that, but when when they still have. Um, anger issues, severance. So, um, I was told there was some kind of medication we could try to get him on to help me. The idea of medicating them on him. Were any of your children on any medications? Mm -hmm. Did any doctors ever tell them that they should be on medications? No, our doctor said we could take them to a. a I guess they're like a kid's psychiatric place here. I don't know what they called it. No, they said they might put it one minute, but I haven't, um, I haven't taken them there yet because if I was trying to get the Phoenix thing done. Mm -hmm. <coughs> like the guidance or something. Um, what other disciplinary measures did you guys use? No, we have a little time now. for them to say, have them say something, which I think it is. Um, I got spankings a few times. But other than that, they had to, they didn't really get disciplined. What were the spankings like? Like, can you tell me about it, like how had that happened? What those incidents was like? Um, like what did they do? Yeah, it was it, so. I mean, like was a timeout for something that happened that was smaller versus a spanking for something that larger. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Can you tell me both more about those? Um, yeah, they usually some timeouts for like, little things I like see they weren't supposed to do or for, um, getting into so. Or they got a sp spank when they hit their sister, sisters. Um, because the girls are starting, were starting to act out and hit that, hit each other, like they would hit them. Mm -hmm. But then hitting, and they got spanked for it because of their, they're so much bigger than their sisters. Because their sister was one when they started doing that. Um, Yeah, that's what it was. It was timeouts. What are timeouts like? Um, to sit in the corner for the amount of time their age was, was what our doctor recommended. Like a minute, like for the five-year-old, about um, maybe five minutes, okay. if that makes sense. How often did they go on um, timeout? <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Depending on the day, if there's been like purposely being bad all day, then they just keep going to um, um, for three and four or five minute increments, whatever their age is. Yeah. Liz says that the children, specifically the boys, were also acting out in other ways, such as hitting their sisters and hitting themselves. According to her, the punishment for this was an escalating scale of timeouts and spankings. She says the length of the timeouts was determined by their age, one minute for every year. So since Deshaun was six years old, he'd go to timeout for six minutes. The truth, however, is much worse, with Deshaun's final timeout before his death being more than one day in timeout per year. 
and he wasn't just sent to the corner. He was sent to a cramped, empty closet with a tarp on the floor and nowhere to even go to the bathroom. Well, they have to well, let's let's talk about like you know like the last couple of days. So tell me about everything you remember from yesterday. Yeah, I know, we'll just stay at home all day now, I do much. Mm. Well, was there wasn't really anything going on yesterday, I'm sure. Something must have happened on Sunday. Hmm? What happened on Sunday? They walked me through your whole day. Mm. They woke up the kids. What time do you guys wake up? Um, around nine. That's when they woke me up. And then I let my dad sleep all the longer and not a lot time. And the kids were all just playing and laughing and watching. Um, watching TV. Where are you guys at? Um, both were in the room for a little bit or in the living room. So you guys are over at? at yeah. Okay. So not every night you guys go to, to the lawn. Yeah, that's just because the van broke down usually we are. Okay, how long has the van been broke down for? About a month or so, They're trying to get Telsus to, to get a fix so we can use it again. And it's just been parked in front of his it's sister's right. house? Yeah. Sister's house for the last month? <laughs> so the last month you guys have been living in Monta Vista? Yeah. Okay. So you woke up around nine ish? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Asked for breakfast, so I fed all of them. Mm -hmm. What'd they have to eat? Um, soon. Then Do you remember about bread cereal? too, because we wanted bread. Um, honey cold. And then... Uh, and Cassandra had to go to work, so she had dropped off her daughter. Um, for... Anthony's mom to babysit for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. So um, they were playing with her um, while she was there. Um, and yeah, she was there for until I think four or four. Took a send around that for most of the day then? Hmm? So could, if I'm understanding you right, Cassandra hung out most Not her daughter. Oh, Cassandra's she, daughter. Yeah, her daughter was oh. being babysat. Um, How old was Cassandra's daughter? One. So Cassandra's daughter hung out with you guys, everyone yeah. that we already mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So she was there till four or five? Yeah. And then... What'd you guys do? Um, we watched some Netflix. I had the kids just crawling around the floor playing with her since she was just finding how to walk. So. She was like, you up with all of them. Um, and, you know, they were playing with her. Well, and they were for a little bit, just to lay down. And that was, book hour and a half, maybe. And then had the kid, brought the kids all back into the room. And we watched TV on the laptop. Um, what they watch? Mm, Barbie, the girls tip. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, you having a big what time? Mm -hmm. <coughs> what for them? Um, then after that we just had dinner and went to bed. So you said dinner, right? Right after 
Um, right after Aaliyah left is when we started cooking it. Aaliyah's the one you're... Yeah. It's um, so around four or five? Yeah, probably. When we're... Yeah, and then after that, everyone laid down mm -hmm. and started chilling out all around. So when you guys went to bed, where does everyone sleep at? Um, I am in the sleep. Sleep on a bed? Yeah, and then the rest of them sleep, like, on the floor right next to it because, um, the boys have always preferred the floor, even when... Grandma have her own bed in her own room? Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. And Anthony was up longer than me. He was, he was on his game. What type of game? Games. Um, it's called Daisy. It's a video game. What time do you think went to bed? Hmm? What time do you think she went to bed? Evening at the end, and sometimes he stays up and doesn't go to sleep at all. So I'm not actually sure if he would want you to sleep off something. Um, but I know he did tell me that when I woke up that he had heard um, the boys whispering to each other at 8 o'clock this morning, and Nishan had out. Asked him something that one before it's time to get up, probably. Which he eats that every morning. Um, and he had to know, so he, they had both gone back to sleep until it was time to take my daughter to school. And, um, what time's that at? The detective asks Liz what happened yesterday. Much like every other question she's been asked in the interrogation so far, getting a helpful, concise answer is like pulling teeth. She says that they slept in and she wanted to continue sleeping, but the kids kept asking her for food. Something that seems like it happened pretty often there. After getting them a nutritious breakfast of honeycomb and bread, a family dropped off her child to be babysat while she went to work. Liz then managed to squeeze in a couple more hours of sleep before bringing all the kids into the bedroom to watch Netflix on her laptop, before the friend returned to pick up her child and everyone went to bed. Clearly this was a high energy household and Liz was a very involved parent. After that, we finally move on to what happened today, the day of Deshaun's death. So like with, with this far as regards today, tell me about everything about today. Do you remember? Um, I got up out sometimes a little after a link up so I slept in and I only, I only get up I don't wake the kids up um because I didn't ready first and then I go and get them up. So tell me about your day. Um, so you went to bed last night at what time? Last night. Um I was listening to stories on my phone until I passed out so Probably didn't actually like fall asleep until um, I think I was that one. Like all the kids were already asleep. Um, Anthony was on the other one up. <coughs> and um, we all woke up at around 11 on the last to go and cop. Went to the last room, got ready. So between midnight 1 a.m. and 11, what happens during those times? Um, I was just sleeping. Like, do the kids go to school? Um, do they eat breakfast? Do they sleep until 11 with you? Like, what happens? Until either 11 or 12, depending on what time I get done and get them up. What time do you put them to bed? Um, usually, but the girls usually don't pass out until, what, 10? So the kids go to sleep somewhere between 8 and 10? Yeah. And, um, and they don't wake up until? Well, 
they said that the boys are awake at 8 this morning, so I don't know if they've been just recently waking me up then, because I don't wake up that easily. But do they go back to sleep until yeah, 1? they go back, yeah. Until around 11.30 or 12, usually. So you woke up at 11? Mm-hmm. And, um, I got ready to shake me and get my way. Hey, um, I to get her ready for preschool, and then you should have me when you could post. <coughs> and then I had, um, Anthony wake the boys up because I was doing her hair. <laughs> So from like 11 to 12, you got ready? Yeah. Okay, what happens at 12? And that's when I came back into the ring and told, and told him to get the boys while I got the girls. And that's when he followed him under his blanket, not waving, not breathing. So... I think there's a large gap in time where we're, mi we're missing a lot of details. He was flying at 8 o'clock, I know that for sure, because Anthony told me that he was talking to him just now. So besides that, I don't know if he got into something, because he had, like, he was, like, drooling up, up the side of his mouth, so I don't know if he had, like, some kind of weird reaction to something he got into. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Does he get into things? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. He so one sore that got into the the caffeine pill sauce. What else does he get into? Food with you, coffees and stuff. That's why I, I don't have any other pills. Um, and so for anemia, which is iron, and those he can't reach. They're at the top of the thing in our room, and I checked it. It's still there. It's, it was still closed. It was available. So that I don't know what it, what else he could have got into. Look at that. So there's, there's, when we look at this timeline here, mm -hmm. we're running into, you know, some, some rather large gaps. Mm -hmm. You know, I was able to ask you what you did yesterday and you were like, boom, 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 boom tell me all these things. And ask about today, there's just a big gaping hole between events. You know what I mean? So I think something else is, there's more stuff going on that we need to know what's going on during those times, especially when it's critical to finding out what happened to your son. I want to know too. And I don't know what you want me to say, I didn't wake up until I'm ready. And it was only when he was up and I was talking to him earlier this morning. That's what he told me. Tell me about that. Tell me about that interaction he had. He told me that he had been, both the boys had been at the 8 o'clock this morning. Um, um, because that's what he, he was, uh, I don't know if he stayed up until then or if he had woken up and her and walked with him, Tommy though. But does that or, make Anthony mad that they're getting up that early when he's going to bed late and he's not getting as much sleep? No, he actually sleeps as it, as it is. Um, like, were they wanting to play and bounce around and he's just trying to sleep or trying to, like, what, I mean... Yeah, they were just... I don't know, and they, when I heard him, he said that they talked to him for a little bit, and, um, like, regular stuff, and then he said he seemed fine, he wasn't... he wasn't acting any different. Um... I don't know, that's all he told me. And then when, he, when I had him wake him up at 12, a little after 12 probably, then that's when he wasn't praying anymore. And it was spit coming out of the side of his mouth. And then I tried to do um, CPR, his mouth getting open. Liz finally begins describing the day. 
initially being pretty vague, insisting that she doesn't remember a lot of the specifics because she was sleeping. Eventually, the detective gets tired of the runaround, finally initiating a bit of confrontation, telling Liz that there's some pretty big gaps in her story, and she's gonna need to do better in order to figure out what really happened with the death of her son. Something that she honestly, to this point, doesn't seem too bothered by. She tries to expand a little further on the timeline, but unsurprisingly, it isn't much help. In this next segment, however, the detective asks Liz to describe the sleeping arrangements for the family to get a better idea of where everyone was when Deshaun's body was discovered. He proceeds to draw some diagrams with Liz's help, which I was originally going to try to recreate to give you guys a better idea of the layout, but I was actually able to get copies of the detective's original handwritten notes, so I'm going to display those while they go through it here. So, when we went to bed last night, how's your room arranged? Mm -hmm. If I were to like, walk in there, Mm -hmm. We walk in and there's a huge bed that, that takes up pretty much the whole room anyway. And then, right, and so, that's all. And then so walk if this is, So if this is your, the room, mm -hmm. where's the door? Then this would be like north, right? Where's, where's your guys' entrance into this room at? Along which wall? Like, there's a hallway right here, there's a hallway here. Like, let's say if the hallway is so great here, you go in. So this is your main entrance in the south? Um, no, no. Alright, so south. let's just say this is the door. You enter the door. Which way is the door open? Does door it open, open like into the bedroom? Mm -hmm. So it goes like this, into yeah, the bedroom? And the bed takes up like most of the room. Most of the room like this? All the way? This way. The door is more of, like right here, but it's the same. So the door is kind of uh, uh, over here? Yeah. Okay. The bed goes like right like this? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a dresser and Along the wall? Yeah. What else is prominent in the room? There's... Oh. Oh, the closets look great for you. You know, kids. Kitchen. Why are those toy kitchen? There's a wall with those. Toy kitchen? Yeah. That's what I do. Where do the kids sleep, sleep at? Right here on the bed. Two kids are sleeping right here on the floor? Mm -hmm. What's the order of how they're sleeping? Who's where? It's different when they move in their sleep. How was it last night? It was... Okay. The sun mm -hmm. That's how you last remember seeing them? Mm -hmm. Is this the head of the bed? Yeah. Is this the way the heads are facing? Mm-hmm. Okay, I have his head over here? Yeah. So that's how they were when you went to sleep. When you woke up, how were they? Mm -hmm. Put in, woke up. They were covered with blankets. All three of them? No, the boy, so I'm not sure how they were. How it more? She was out, not more. past the bed more? Mm -hmm. So she moved kind of this way? Yeah. yeah. She had playing on uh, right here because usually she sleeps with tools. So that was right here, but she moved to like right here somewhere. Yeah. Okay. And what about the two boys? They were still sleeping, but I ran up, left the blanket. I just assumed they were just sleeping too. But they were both like still like. like so when you walk in, tell me, I mean, as you said, you took an hour to get yourself ready. Yeah. And then which you got. Gabby right there, who did you, who did you? Oh. Did you get Gabby? You get... Did you walk in and you got her and it got her ready? Or what happened? Um, I walked in, grabbed the girls, and as I was um, getting a brush to do her hair, I told Anthony he grabbed the boys for me as I was walking, kept her really hot overnight. And then his, he went and got me and Antoine. Where were you? Coming right back. I was coming so back. You're outside the room when you told me to get him? I, I had been walking up. Outside yeah. the room, okay? Um, you say you get the boys and tell me what you hear. Like, I want to be like a fly on the wall if I was watching a movie. Um, I was saying that with my back to the, to the room. As I was walking out, I'm like, I said, Babe, can you get the boys up? And he's like, Yeah. So, 
as I'm walking out, I hear him uh, kick time to get up, like saying hello, and then he said it again, and he just started screaming, so I came right back in. What did he scream? He said something's wrong with the show. What was so happening? He had, like, he had come in to wake him up, so he had lifted the blanket, because it... Anton gets up easy, so he was already sitting there. So he took the blanket off of Deshaun and said, come on, it's time to go. And I tried to um, go into the living room, and he didn't, wasn't with me, I guess, so that's when he... That's when he yelled. And so I came in, and I grabbed him and took him into the living room. Try to do CPR. It's like the whole officer. So the only one was hurt. Who we'll called? My um, well, Anthony called, but he gave the phone over to Anne Marie to talk to him. So he's Anne Marie, mom. Yeah. Oh, his mom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where was she during this whole thing? She was walking back and forth, to trying to deal with my other kids and seeing what was going on. Now from the time you guys go to sleep and wake up, and she ever come in and check on you guys or check on the kids or? Mm -hmm. All right, so you don't wake up at eight. You just hear from Anthony telling you that the boys were up at eight. What time did that happen at? He told you. He told you that the kids are up. He told me after everything was, after everything happened. He said, oh. That he was fine at the end, it was like because he heard them and he talked to him. Tell me about your getting ready. Um, I go to the bathroom and um, do it, but I have to be in the morning to get ready to go home. And I'm in there the whole hour. You're in the bathroom the entire time? Yeah. When you woke up, where were you? Close. So you're over here, and then Anthony's over here? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not a very good artist. Um, when you wake up, what do you see? Um, when I woke up, everyone was asleep. So, like, you just gotta just sneak up in the end of the bed that way. And get what I need, like my bathroom bag. Did you there. hear anything going on while you were sleeping? No, everyone was, no one was even awake, Antoine was just, he had been up early. Tell me about the conversation that you and, you and Anthony had about him saying that you saw him at 8 in the morning and, and whatnot. Um, because Anthony had so that, um, she asked, what happened? I come there. If, um, how long he'd been like that, or if we had talked to him at all, or anything. And then Anthony, that's the one thing. So that at eight o'clock he was talking to him this time. And um, I don't know what she said. I don't remember. I was, I was swimming, holding Deshaun. I was, I tuned up with Eddie outside. I honestly don't know what was said after that. Um, yes, literally, I remember it was him saying he was fine, and then I know Emery walked back to her room to leave some point, and she called, um, I was trying to call, um, no, but then Anth did on his phone, and then gave the phone to her. Who else did you guys call? Um, I know she had called Emery to come. For the kids. So Anne Marie called Anne Marie? Yeah. Um, that's all. What they called anyone else, I didn't, I don't know what I would. All I heard was the 911 call. Did you call anyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Social media, Snapchats, Facebooks, anything like that? Mm -hmm. Do you know if Anthony did? Mm -hmm. We just know that Anne Marie called Anne Marie Jr. Mm -hmm. to come over and watch the kids and figure out stuff. Yeah. <laughs>
So after talking in circles for another couple minutes, as well as getting a rough idea of the kids' sleeping arrangements, we haven't really learned anything new. The story so far is this. Lizzie says Anthony was up with the boys around 8 a.m., at which time they were fine, and then everyone went back to sleep. Then, a couple hours later, Liz woke up to get some of the kids ready for preschool. She says she woke up and went straight into the bathroom by herself to get ready, while Anthony was getting the other kids up. After over an hour, she says that she heard Anthony screaming that something was wrong with Deshaun. So she came out of the bathroom and found him lying under a blanket, not breathing, with a little bit of spit coming out of his mouth. She says she tried to do CPR, but was unable to get his mouth open. At this time, Anthony called police, but gave the phone to his mother, Anne Marie Sr., who herself had just gotten off the phone with her daughter, Anne Marie Jr., to come watch the kids while they figured all this out. While it's far from a precise timeline, at the very least, it sounds like a plausible series of events, given the situation. However, as police would investigate the scene further, it would become evident that this isn't really how things went down, which we'll get to. But for the time being, the detective accepts this explanation and moves on. Has anything like this happened before? You haven't had any other issues with him sleeping or sleep apneas or hard time waking up or anything? He's a strong, uh, heavy sleeper. Well, he lana. Um, I mean, obviously, one of the things we do in child deaths is it's rare, right? It's not. It's it's an anomaly. It's usually, you know, it's not like we can say it's a natural thing most times because usually that's old people that you know. It's yeah. just what happens when they're old. You die. Um, younger people, that's that's not expected. So a lot of times, what we do is autopsies and stuff like that to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, is there going to be anything in that autopsy that, that's going to come back to it? That's going to be a surprise, where you would think. Man, he, you know, this was something he got into. Well, or... that's because he wasn't keeping any weight on. It has to be. Because if it wasn't that, it's that he got into something. Because I don't know. I've never seen a dead body before. I don't know if it's normal to be full. No, from not really full, but like drooling with bubbles and stuff. At the mouth, if that's normal or not. Do you know? Depends. Depends on the situation, and that's what we will find out. Not foaming? It was, it was like just drool, like um, thick drool. It wasn't like actual like foam. I don't know if it's foam. How did he feel? Shin? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For cold, we kind of open his mouth when I tried to do see walls or the alarm here. What do you mean he couldn't open his mouth? I, I, I guess to try to um, get his mouth open and it wasn't open. Mouth was stiff, like the jaw was locked. Mm -hmm. Were you able to eventually get it open? And then the cop came in to, to continue the CPS after, or from what I was doing, he couldn't either. He said, I can't open his mouth. How did the rest of his body feel? No. Malleable? Stiff? No. Hard? He, he was ending, he wasn't stiff or anything. Even his skin looked normal. But they asked on the phone if he was green, and if he wasn't, he was just really yellow skin. What other what are th there are things around the house that he could have possibly got into? Maybe soap, there was soap in the bathroom, but I would be trying well, to eat that. I don't know what else could have. Well, you were in the bathroom the whole time, right? Could have, yeah. So couldn't have been in the bathroom. I'm saying if he had like, gotten into anything like the night before or anything. Oh. What about, and, and I, don't, I don't care 
Um, what about like drugs, prescription mm-hmm. or illicit? Mm-hmm. Do you use mm-hmm. anything? No marijuana, nothing. Mm-hmm. Anything for your anxiety? Um, I have smoked marijuana a few times, but I haven't had anything. I don't have any for him to have, you know. No prescriptions or anything like that. No. What about Anthony? No. Does he ever use any illegal drugs? He did when he was a kid because of his dad, but yeah, you know, so it's not since I've been with him. So there's no codeines or fentanyls or no. meth or anything around the house or anything like that? Mm. What about chemicals to clean the house? Oh um, man, where he keeps all that stuff in her room. And he doesn't, he doesn't go in there because she has like boxy stuff on her. Like he has chill walls so she doesn't walk in the locking room and stuff. Mm-hmm. But all that stuff she literally sleeps in her closet. The only things really that are out of the dish soap and like body wash and. But do you see anything abnormal with that? Um, it's just like a pump handle though, so anyone could take so little out and more. like it wasn't empty or anything. <laughs> After over an hour of taking things easy and giving Liz a chance to speak, the detective realizes that he's not making any headway, so he needs to change up his approach. He begins to drop the mild-mannered act and clearly labels in his notes that it's time for the initial confrontation with Elizabeth. Um, I'm not a doctor. Unless it's... Right. So I'm not a doctor. I just, I just know that... Do um, your other son looks significantly small compared to other kids his age and it sounds like Deshaun was also kind of small in stature as well. I don't know if just taking a little bit of soap or a little bit of this would cause these issues, you know what I mean? And if you only had five pills... That's what I'm saying, I know it's going to be more, like the main cause is going to be because his um, because he has no fat on him, because he doesn't gain weight. Well, if he has no fat on him, and he took caffeine pills, like, how long ago? A couple weeks. A couple weeks ago, you think that would have probably already taken effect on the body then. Yeah, that's what like I Like, not now, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and know, it did. He lost weight back right after that. How much weight do you think he lost? Probably like eight to ten pounds. I don't have to. But he's that's why I know he's been giving him out um, like rare or fatty food or stuff to try and get his weight back the and we like it wasn't working. He wasn't gaining, that's when we were supposed to be getting um PDSH this week or next week. Whenever the settled. Because she's been on PA shit before. And it helped him. Do you think there's anything that I haven't asked you you think I need to know kind of right now? Or you're like, you know, you should probably know about this. Or we haven't touched on this topic yet. Or I understand this is difficult. But obviously it's something we need to do to try to figure out what happened. And you don't have a um, a phone with you or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Do you have a phone? Um, I have one. I use just for like movies and stuff. I don't use it as like a phone for me. Where's that at? Yeah, the house. The house. What type of phone is that? Can really look Samsung or look five or something. Where is it at at the house? Mm, probably on the floor in the living room.
What was the last time you were in the RV for the start of the event? Kind of. When it broke down. A month or so it's been a month. Yeah, after we parked it there, we haven't touched it. Neither one of you guys? Mm -hmm. Where's the keys? Where are the keys at? Somewhere, I'm not sure. We probably will look at them too. Mm -hmm. What do the keys look like? Just a regular Ford key. Regular what? Hey, the Ford key, the Ford and um, silver key card, and it's I think it's on a um, lanyard. I think are called. I'm not sure. I don't remember. What. I think it's a soft side serpent lanyard or something. Like that. Soft side what? Serpent. What's that? It's from Riverdale. It's from what? Riverdale. What's that? The TV show based off the old Archie comics. Oh. Okay. Well, there's some wire for you. Um, I'm, I'm going to be right back, okay? Before you get some wire, I'll get some clamps. I'll be right back. After showing Liz that he's not buying her story, he thinks there's more going on, and the tone of the interrogation begins to shift, the detective gets up and leaves Liz alone, to think, for a pretty significant amount of time. This isn't by accident, it's a deliberate tactic, intended to keep Liz uncomfortable, letting her know that she's not in control, and the interrogation's headed in a new direction, one that's not in her favor. This is where I decided to stop the first video as well. I wanted to give you guys a chance to hear Liz's story yourself and form your own opinions before we get into the real meat of it, but I'd like to know your thoughts. Do you think that there's any truth to Lizzie's version of events? Or do you think that it's all BS? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this coverage and want to make sure you don't miss part two, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you could leave a like or a comment, it really helps the channel grow and proves my content's value to the almighty algorithm, which I greatly appreciate. If you're new here, consider checking out some of my other videos, covering exclusive cases and interrogations dealing with a wide range of topics. And if you want to show some extra love, you can become a paid supporter right here on YouTube or on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. It gets you access to exclusive additional content, like the entire official synopsis of Liz and Anthony's interrogations directly from the officers who conducted them. You also get ad-free versions of all my videos, an exclusive Discord role in my official server, The Interrogation Room, and you get shoutouts in all my future videos. Before I do my shoutouts though, I just want to take a second to reach out to anyone who's struggling right now. As someone who's dealt with mental health issues for a majority of my life, I know how impactful it can be to simply hear some words of kindness and encouragement when you're feeling down. No matter what you're struggling with, know that you are not alone, and there is a way out. I know how overwhelming it can feel, and how daunting it seems to ask for help, but there are people who've been exactly where you are, and they're willing to help you find a way out. One of the resources I always recommend, because it's one I've used personally, is the SAMHSA hotline. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, there are people willing to talk and help if you just reach out. You have value and you deserve happiness. These feelings are not permanent, they will pass. And as such, they don't deserve a harmful permanent response. Please reach out, the world needs you. Okay, with that taken care of, I'd like to thank my senior detectives, Pixie, Miranda Stone, Lisa Wilson, Kimberly Collier, Kim Seeds, Caleb Gore, Josh Efford, Sherry Spain, Luke Wallace, Sunny Side Up, and Game Changer. I'd also like to thank my investigators, M Brains and Cindy Yates, and my interrogators, April Parker, and not just an interrogator, but a double interrogator, a supporter on both platforms, April Lofstrom, also known as Heartbreaker Heartthrob. She goes above and beyond supporting this channel. I am incredibly grateful. Thank you so much. With that being said, until part two, 
Have a good day.